Hi, I'm Sam Peterson, author of two books, Trunky, Transgender Junkie, and Sugar, a memoir of craving. I'm an old gay trans man with bad teeth, and I love knives, and I'm not here to rate them or tell you what's the best, the fastest, the newest, the greatest. A lot of people on the interwebs do that. Great. I'm here to queerly share my queer love of knives with you. Knives, knives, knives. What to say about them? I bought this fucking killer a couple of uh, days ago, and I am in love. This is the Arc Form Saber in uh, 20 SV and um, Ultem scales. Check it out. I am living for these the Ultem. It reminds me of like old radios from the 40s or something, like clear Bakelite. There's something inherently nostalgic about this material. And it's clear. I fell in love with this knife because of the handle. But when you get to the blade, oh mama, watch out. This knife is a murderous beast. I never think of knives in terms of the old ultraviolence, but this blade is so sharp and so fierce and scary. It's a scary blade. Ah. And it cuts like nobody's business. Slicey, pointy, stabby. It's my new EDC. <laughs> So sexy. So, it, is it a queer blade? I don't know. There's something very high-end about this Ulta material. This knife reminds me of um, Tom Ford's men's tuxedo jackets for some reason. You know, paired with the aviator sunglasses. It's a very high-class gay knife. Ultum, at first glance, is a very queer material. It feels kind of like G10, but as mentioned, it's transparent. This kind of golden hue of a million Jurassic mosquitoes trapped in amber. It's very sophisticated, while also at the same time looking very cheap. That's pretty queer, I guess. This blade is positively sinister. I'm terrified of it. The, this knife may be in my pocket, but it's the boss here. By the way, don't play with your knives around your pets. I'm almost obsessed with the idea that I'm going to be flicking and flipping my knife around my cat and it's going to go flying. You know how sometimes you like halfway open the blade, you know, you kind of fuck it up a little bit and it goes flying or it drops like near your feet? No? That only happens to me. Okay. I've been really stressed for a while, probably since Walter got sick, and um, I had to find a way to pay for his hospital bill. It all worked out, but not without a lot of Byzantine back alley dealings. Um, by which I mean, I didn't have the cash at the time, still don't, and won't for a while. So on the one hand, I've been throwing money at my credit cards to get them back down, and on the other, buying knives, which I find immensely soothing. It's counterintuitive, I know. Knife shopping and purchasing is the antidote for the blues, however temporary. And buying knives while you're throwing all your paycheck into credit debt seems, well, Sisyphean. You know, the guy who rolls the rock up the hill only to have it come back down, so he has to roll the rock back up the hill. <sighs> I'm stressed the fuck out. Work has been borderline insane, but not in a busy way, so I've had plenty of time to sit at work and chew on how insane it is. Knives are a great gift to come home to. On a particularly stressful day, I will go to my case open it, go drawer by drawer by drawer, 
look at the knives, open them, flick them, button lock them, thumb them, top flip them, back flip them, admiring their maker's choice of materials, the steel, the blade geometry, the shape that makes every knife just a little different, even in their sameness. I revel in their differences. I listen to their unique click upon opening, and I feel just a little calmer. A relative of mine recently heard that I was into knives and sent me some cutlery that had been in our family for decades. She also sent me this little hunting blade by the old school Western knives, who used to make a lot of traditional shaped hunting blades and stuff. It's wrapped leather, and it almost looks like a little mini K-bar, doesn't it? Yeah, it says Western USA. I tried to clean it up a bit, but uh, it could probably use a little more. This is its scabbard. A scabbard for swords? This is its sheath. Then I unwrapped these. I, I'm not really sure what to make of these. They are <laughs> extraordinarily large and ugly in such a way that's really impressive. Were my recent ancestors giants? Did my kin revel in feeling diminished by gigantic knives and forks so large as to be nearly unusable? If anyone can tell me something about cutlery like this, I'd appreciate it. It's obviously staghorn, something horns, and um, I don't know if you can see that. And it says sheer steel on the blade. They seem very handcrafted, as if someone in the family made them, or made them for the family. They speak of a, of a time and an aesthetic so foreign as to be almost unimaginable. So help me imagine. I know there was a fashion for staghorn cutlery. There's plenty of it out there. Mostly from the 50s and well before. Vintage, they say. I want to know more about them. I also want to clean them up respectfully. If you have any suggestions on that, I'm all ears. As for you, dear friend, don't forget to eat salty things with all that water you're drinking. A mother worries. See you next week.